Hello everyone and welcome to week four, se like season or semester two of head drawing, where we're looping back around and doing, studying the same stuff we studied previously, but again, because this stuff takes a lot of passes to memorize. And uh, like the Riley head, the Riley method head is what we're covering this week. What the Riley method head, Riley method is, is it's a basically a GPS system for the head and the figure that lets you map out like um, connective rhythms of kind of how the face works in uh, in terms of like I mean almost kind of like a bendable wire sculpture of the face in 3D space. So what you're seeing on screen is um, a, a uh, three as uh, a three um, three pose view of a uh, three pose turnaround of a Riley method head in its most basic form. Uh, the Riley method is a very highly flexible system which can be bent to fit different facial types. It can be adapted to cartoon characters and caricatures. It can be used on animal faces too. Um, it's also a system of drawing the figure and we'll get in more into that in the future in my Friday figure drawing classes too. We've touched on it before previously but we're going to be delving back into it in greater detail in, uh, in future uh, in future um, sessions of a Friday class. So the um, thing about the Riley method head is you can, this is, a, this is a method that was like created to kind of like streamline the process of learning how to break down how the head works. Uh, so it was made to basically get artists understanding what they're looking at fast and get them to, the, get them to looking to have, to have like systematize something that looks plausible um, with uh, as few lines as with as few lines as possible, and so it becomes a system of memorization that you can use to like recenter yourself if you get lost, and even if you're not necessarily using it, like having internalized the Riley method from having done it um, several times and memorized generally how it works will wind up bleeding its way into everything else you draw even if you're not necessarily using its rhythms this time, like because you've done Riley method heads, like you can, you have like the mental image of one in your head. So you have a good, a good idea of a GPS of how to, of how the heads you're drawing work, even if they're like, like cartoon character heads or something that are really simple. Um, like I said, the, the, this, this method is just a, um, it's, you, you're supposed to memorize it. Uh, and it takes a long while to memorize it, uh, to like fully utilize it and memorize it. Take, it can take like upwards of a year or two years to really, to really memorize and master it. Uh, but you're not supposed to necessarily be perfect with it because you're supposed to modify it to suit your needs. Um, and, uh, and you're also supposed to like adapt it to other systems of drawing or other observations and other facial types. And stuff uh, you can use it to layer other things that you've been studying about onto it or or use other methods of drawing in it to help you draw it uh, in our case um, like the Riley method head is something that you can that if you are a beginner you can you can start learning it straight away and you'll be okay um, generally if you know how if you know how 3d shapes work to a certain extent you can jump right into the Riley method but um, the way I've been structuring the classes, which is based on how, so how like other teachers I've learned from have structured it, is for the last like three weeks before this, we practiced, uh, we practiced uh, Loomis heads, which are like these guys right here. It's kind of ball with the, hot, with the side planes chopped off. It's a little invention created by Andrew Loomis. It's a ball with the sides chop off of it, which is a really simplistic way of visualizing the head and the jaw and so on. Um, we've been using this. We've also been making observations of how the human skull works, like generally how the um, how this complex piece of, uh, of human anatomy sort of feels. Like the observation drawing we did on the skull how the skull works and stuff 
was supposed to like kind of key you into the idea that like these abstract forms we're doing are made to describe like very complex things. So you kind of have to you're kind of forced to think about this thing in terms of big shapes. I mean, you kind of get an observational idea of like how more how like the cranial mass of the skull works. It works a lot differently than like a whole sphere or whatever. Um, so there's some of that in the Riley method head. And then in addition to that, there was the stuff we did with the simple Asaro head, which is a simple planar head that we did last week that I actually have handy in last week's demo that I can show. I think I should better just show these. Let's see here. Yeah, here's the, um, here's the return to the Luna sets we did a couple weeks ago. These guys. Uh, here is the skull, of course. We did a skull turnaround, like so, and uh, different positions of the skull from photographs and 3D models and other things. Let's close that, don't save. And so the point where I'm showing you this is like how this stuff kind of builds off itself. And last week we did the um, simple Asaro head, which is this guy, uh, which I actually like played with adding some more features on top of here. I think I can actually turn that off. And that's basically what we were doing last week right here, the simple planar head. And if you notice, there's some similarities on this to some of the rhythms of the Riley method head like that kind of curve that comes down from the ear, for example. And the uh, this kind of like arch, this like kind of like bridge arch look to the brow and the top and the front plane of the head right here. There's very similar rhythms in the memorization head to the Riley method. And some other demos from last week. But the point I'm making is that like this stuff is meant to build. Uh, your knowledge is supposed to build off of um, itself with each of these things. You can jump right into just starting with the Riley method head. Uh, the other stuff will also help you. And you can go back and learn that stuff too. Um, for tonight, uh, newcomers especially, I would suggest uh, doing, doing basically what I'm just doing right here, which is like a draw over of the Riley method to kind of like key you in to um, memorizing uh, and uh, observing the memorization lines that uh, are in it and how they work. So I'm coming into this a little raw. I did like some um, I did some sketching last, some quick sketch last night using the Riley method heads. So like uh, that's kind of sort of what I was doing right here. It's these, this freehand sketching down here. When you are freehand sketching with the Riley with the Riley method heads, you don't have to be you don't have to perfectly memorize this thing for your like short quick sketches. You just you just like bust them out quickly and kind of like use a few of the rhythms in there that you kind of remember. You can glance back at the at that um, Riley method head and use them in your sketching. But a sketch is a sketch. So it shouldn't be perfect. We're not going for perfection even when we are trying to really memorize the head anyway. But um, getting you to uh, getting to a uh, to a starting point uh, in terms of getting to getting you to a starting point is a good idea to do a draw over of the Riley method rhythms, and it's also a good idea to take a photograph. And of like a really clearly lit photograph with no warping or distortion going on um, of a human face and then try to find where the Riley method rhythms of the face are and I'll show some examples of that shortly um, let me actually bring my gesture drawing app on screen over here 
Actually, no, I don't need to bring that on screen. I can enable it in OBS. There we go. Should be enabled. There we go. Okay, so. So first off, that's that's an example of like the Riley method used in figure drawing right here. And we're gonna we're not getting into that this time. That's coming for the future. Oops. Gotta shrink that a bit. So that's coming for the future. We're not gonna be handling. We're not gonna be doing this right now. Um, but and that's gonna be in our my figure drawing class. It's also gonna be in my quick sketch class as well. But as you can see, that this this uses like a shorthand, quick version of like some of the Riley method rhythms for this quick this figure quick sketch. Um, this is a planar head that kind of uses some of the Riley method uh, rhythms. This one would, would be good to do a draw over on for sure. Um, this is a really well executed head using the Riley method. Uh, this is a caricature using Riley method. This is actually from Proco, I think. And uh, I actually have an image with this, well, like a better version of this. This one's actually a copy. This one's actually a student copy of, uh, with a little bit flatter, poor, poor executed nose of the three quarter view of the Riley method head. And here's a skull and a uh, planar head that utilizes the Riley method rhythm. So you can see like because of the, how the muzzle is constructed of the face and uh, the rhythms coming down from the ears and the top plane of the head. Here's a really excellent example of Riley method in execution. There's the, Riley, the, Riley, there's the basic forms of the Riley method body right there. It doesn't look very impressive like this. That's because like more skilled people are able to, are able to integrate it with more lively use of gesture and so on. Um, of course, there's another caricature with Riley method. So this is an example of Riley method head abstraction, and uh, comparing it to um, you, uh, comparing it to like building up the planar tones of the face, and so on. This one is a planar head using Riley method rhythms. Several examples of different facial types with Riley methods. Uh, and so on and so forth. This one uses Riley method and also uses a measuring system to of the corners of the mouth to, to plot out roughly about where the center point of the eyes are. And so on and so forth. And this is an example of something that I suggest people do here. This is not perfect, but mind you, like this, I don't think they handled the side plane of this head very well. There's good, there is some good stuff in here, and, some, and the, uh, these eyes are looking kind of beady. But that's an example of the kind of studies you should be, you should be doing. We might, I might do a couple of them here. Uh, and there's some other examples of studies. These are actually a lot rougher than I would want people to try studying with, but it's still good for memorization. This is a much more kind of blocky and planar version of the of the Riley method head. Uh, I would ne not necessarily study from this, but there is some things to take away from it. It's a bad image there. Uh, the, this one's really well executed example. I think it's from the artist Nathan Fawkes, who made this one. But yeah, I'll upload these later for people to for people to check out if you stick around to the end. But um, uh, but yeah, there's like plenty of fodder to go through here in this for sure. I'm gonna put try to put up on screen maybe my little diagram image of the Riley method. As oh look at that, this is a this is a modified version of the Riley method figure right here, which we'll get into more figured on. But you can see up in the head here, they're using um, a Riley head method head abstraction right there, and that's. That was done at a very small scale compared to the scale we're going to be working at for the head portraits that we're doing in this class. But this is that you can do stuff like this uh, for your figures when you get the uh, when you get the Riley methods uh, method rhythms uh, memorized. And the thing about it, it's like uh, the point. The point of the Riley method is it's kind of like um, finding the rhymes of the face, if that makes any sense. You find the um, you're looking for, uh, the Riley method is basically like a way of making the face into a series of 
rhymes, of sim simplified rhymes that you can more easily remember, as if you're like remembering a poem by the rhymes, by the rhyming verses, kind of. Um, so let's see here. Some of the heads we're going to be looking at tonight for our practice include some, probably some Hans Holbein heads, although these have hats on, so we might not use all of them, actually. So there's a few of them we can. Uh, last week we actually uh, yoinked some uh, Nikolai Fetchin heads, which we might return to again, because we're going to be using a new technique on them. So these would be good to do um, draw over studies on, for sure. And uh, last week we didn't get to it, but there's a um, whole bunch of Hollywood heads I yoinked from the internet. Uh, like that one would be really good to do want to do a Riley Method study on. That one, that one, that one. Yeah, most of these are good. Like they're all varying. They're all going to be. A, that's a really good one actually. It's from one of my favorite films too, um, Barton Fink. But. Um, this one's a little crunchy image, but you could still get a get a good study out of that. <laughs> and this one I, I included this one because you know, well, memes and also uh, Danny DeVito's got a really very specific facial type that you can play with distorting the Riley method on. Riley method also works for facial expressions too, by the way. Like those rhythms on the face that you're seeing right here on my screen that I've gone over in red, like, in order to make a facial, facial expression, those wires just bend out, basically, in, in unison with each other, like the corners of the mouth and stuff. Like, when you start getting used to memorizing the Riley Method heads, like, you can start to learn how the face distorts. Uh, be, uh, because, like, the Riley Method head is not a static object, it is a simplification of the bone and muscle of the structure of the face. So, um, so you can like, uh, so you can distort it for when there's a facial expression change, and you uh, and you can uh, also distort it to fit people's facial types. So what I'm probably going to have us do this evening is um, we will be using a lot of these, and uh, we will either be doing we'll be doing a mix of drawovers and quick sketch. To try to um, utilize the uh, utilize the Riley method and stuff, like I'm not expecting people to get like a full scale memorization. Like I'm hoping like people will get like will start to pick up on like one or two things out of this out of like doing these tonight, basically. Um, so we're gonna get started on that in about ten minutes. Uh, we'll go for a total of two and a half hours to three hours or so to, for total drawing. But um, I'm going to um, I'm going to upload some key images in chat that will be very helpful. And if you're in the Discord, um, I I'm going to see if I can actually actually know what I'm going to maybe upload them to Google Photos, and then uh, people can just and I can just link that in um, uh, I can just link that in Twitch and and. Uh, one second. I mean, look at that in Twitch and in uh, the Discord chat by the album. So let's see albums, create album. I mean, I think I'll actually upload, a, uh, I'll upload all the Hollywood celebrity photos too, because why not? Let's see here. Oh, neat. There's actually a couple images in here that aren't in the current folder I have that I'm going to include too. Because why not? So just bear with me. We're essentially on a 10 minute break right now. Okay, one second. We're essentially on a ten-minute break at the moment, so uh, take take like take your time and just like take a breather, get ready. We're going to be drawing, maybe warm up your hand a bit, uh, but I'm going to be uploading some things that we're going to be using for the uh, for the gesture drawing session, uh, for the head drawing session. Sorry.
So let's see here. Where did I put those? There they are. So that's uploading now. Uh, I'm going to copy the link now. Create link. Copy. Cool. It's just uploading all the stuff now. Yeah, how's everyone doing this evening? Are you ready to draw? So we're gonna be doing a lot of draw. Let me see if I can actually get the um, that one thing up on screen. Let's see, open skulls. Let's see, class demos, head drawing, week four, there we go. And here's the red head, Riley head ref. Okay, cool. Okay, so there's one image in particular. Oh, actually, um, let's see. I'll upload it right now to um, classroom chat. So that's going to be going in there now. And I'll put it up on screen very shortly. Give me a sec. So this will be your main unit of reference. Maybe see that, Maybe I'm going to see how I can compose this on the screen. So. Maybe we can have a column of the of like all three of these heads on the left side uh, while we're doing these. But here they are right here. This is a tree of heads that you can use as your turnaround reference for Riley method. Right here. Mind you, this perfect one, to, this 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 center one doesn't perfectly line up with the other two. So just keep that in mind. Like you notice that brow is a little bit higher than over there. I actually don't even think these two line up perfectly either. But the um, the rhythms are what you want to really pay attention to. And you, if you wanted to get really accurate with doing a turnaround study of the running method head, you could do this too. But what we're going to be doing to start off, I think we're actually going to do, um, I think we're going to start off with a um, triple head turnaround. We'll be spending 25 minutes on each, um, on each pose here. Uh, I think I might do it freehand. Uh, I think I'm ready to do it freehand. I'm going to give it a shot, and if I start feeling like I'm a little bit shaky, I'm going to move to um, uh, I'm going to move to doing uh, a draw over study. Actually, no. What I should do is I should grab the Hollywood heads and do a draw over study. But then I'll be like I'll be doing a draw over study of the head using the Riley method. I think that's what I, I think that's what I should do. So let me get the image real quick. I'm gonna make a vertical version of that image real fast for us. We got about a couple couple more minutes before we're gonna be starting. Um, actually, I think I think it would be a good idea, like for this for this period, um, if I center the image on each of the individual um, Riley heads. Like we're going to be doing a profile to start with, so I'll focus on the profile head, Riley head. I think that should be pretty good. Just give me a second. I've got something to grab that I'm going to be having near me as my handy reference tool. And uh, then we'll get started.
what I'm doing is I'm uh, I have an iPad near me that I'm using as another uh, display for my reference because I have a bunch of other monitor stuff that is taken up um, that is currently taken up screen real estate uh, with like OBS and other things. So I'm gonna bring up my reference images real quick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing turnarounds tonight and then we're gonna be finishing off with some Riley Method quick sketch. Kind of playing with the, um, the forms that we're trying to memorize. Uh, so I'm gonna put the uh, first head we're gonna use up there. So let me adjust the display a bit. Find a good profile view head. That one's kind of not, kind of, but not really profile view. There was at least one or two profile view heads in this, I think. There's one. This isn't perfectly profile view, but I'm tempted to use it. Um, just because like uh, it's it's a really, really like good photograph for like observing like how the head works a little bit. So I think we might use this one to start. Uh, but you can more you can more strictly follow the um, the full profile view and just like do a copy study of uh, the um, the Riley head that's on screen if you like. Um, but here uh, I'm gonna I'm going to share the album now if I can. So I'm going to share the album in Twitch chat and in Discord chat. So I'm going to set the timer now for 25 minutes, and we're going to have 25 minutes to break this head down that's on screen into a basically a Riley method. Um, approach. Take it slow. If you're new to this, maybe you do like one or two kind of quickie passes to kind of wrap your head around a little bit. If you are really new, I would even suggest um, copy pasting the image of the guy's face itself and trying to find those Riley abstractions. Uh, I believe I'm actually going to do that right now. Let's see, imp is there an import? Import image. Hollywood heads. There we go. Get that guy right there. So it isn't quite profile view, but I'm still going to use it anyway because it's good practice. And uh, if you want to, like I said, you can just do a copy study from the Riley method head that's up there. Okay, so. For this guy, um, good place to start. Start with like a Loomis with a Loomis head structure. That, that is, you start with like a sphere with a general shape of the head. Then you get kind of a side plane, and the, and you can kind of figure out where the side plane is because like the halfway point of the this circle that you chop off is usually like rides on the ear. So this guy is probably like, his head is probably angling like that, I want to say. So the side plane of his head is about to here-ish, I would say. Gonna get like the basics of like the Linus head rhythms in a little bit. So I can kind of plot out stuff. His hairline is pretty clear. Um, 
Rowland is wrapping it in a strange way. Maybe the angle of the ear was a little bit off. It's probably more like this. I'm just trying to make guesstimations here. So I'm going to kind of like contain the front of his face a little bit. Here, even though I'm not really using the Riley rhythm quite yet. I'll get like the center line of his face in roughly about where it is. Let's do like a C curve for his, uh, a couple of C curves for his neck here. Get the ear, get a little bit of the ear in there. So I'm gonna lower opacity on that. Make another layer. Now I'm gonna use what I started with to kind of figure out where, uh, roughly about where the Riley method rhythms are. And I'm gonna to try to interpret them. A good place for me to start, I think, would be the brow. Whoops. Like the brow rhythm right here. I'm gonna be glancing back and forth. When you're doing these, be glancing back and forth to your roadmap, like as if you're like trying to travel somewhere and you've got a GPS tracker. And uh, the GPS tracker is telling you where to turn left and right at certain intersections. That's just fundamentally what the Riley method is about. It's a roadmap of the face. You can find yourself in this complex uh, series of weird rhythms and muscles and bones and planes that changes constantly and that varies from human type to face type to face type. So a major method, a major Riley method rhythm to watch out for is this one that comes from the top of the ear and kind of curls around to the corner of the corner of the mouth like that. So that kind of helps you f like find out the mass of the cheekbone about here. Like if you go through with the Riley method, you can actually like go in and like mass in like little areas of volume, kind of like that little that little blob I put in there. I found some drawings previously where somebody had actually done that. We might take a look at them. I think I have them saved in another folder. Yeah, this is actually not quite a profile view. This is a three quarter view, so I may actually go and reference the three quarter view a little bit. And the main thing I'm going to be referencing is like this right here, um, because like you don't really see that on the profile, like that kind of like triple wedge sort of thing that's going on there. So let's see here. So one of the rhythms is one that comes up about here and uses the side plane of the head. The name of the game here is memorization, and it's going to take several tries over and over again over the span of like a year or something to really memorize and master the Riley method head. I have not mastered it. I'm here to study it with. I'm here to study it with all of you. Um, I know what to study to get better at it. And this is you're watching me put in mileage in studying it right now. I'm gonna get like this in here. I'm gonna get like the top of the head. It kind of curls over here because this is actually, like I said, this is not quite a profile view. This is a three-quarter view. It's just a really odd one. It's close enough to profile that I'm gonna be using it as fodder for a profile view, though, for the purposes of this. So I personally, I would think it would be a little bit boring to do a full-on profile view. Maybe wondering about this area down here. This is just like a rhythm to connect the neck with the head. Let's see here. So I've got the front plane of the nose 
like this. Follow the eye somewhere in there. Just get like a simplified eyelid, uh, eyelid over there. Then I take rhythm from the nose here. I think that this rhythm is going to be roughly about fairly close to where like the side of the top of the side of the nostril is actually. So I think that's what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to start with that and loop around. If you notice like that little scrunch there with the cheek kind of scrunches, that's like literally illustrated on screen for you right now is one of the Riley rhythms and uh, and why it ex why the why that rhythm exists because of those muscles there and how they work when you open it when you stretch open your mouth. In the future we're going to be covering facial anatomy more in depth so we'll be able to go on more of a deep dive on how those muscles work but for now Riley method is an abstract way of kind of keying you into these big sh these big complex forms in a really simple way. relatively simple. This is still a fairly complex method to learn, but it's much simpler it's much simpler than how like the, the actual face works. The name of the game is simplification and memorization. So another important rhythm of the Riley Method head is the second rhythm coming from the ear. It goes to about there. And I'm going to take another glance at the three-quarter view again. I'm just going to put in his lips here. He's got like a two-cylinder inside that face. Like one of the, the one of the things about the Riley Method is um, is it's good for plotting out the, the cylinder that makes up where the teeth are. Uh, Gottfried Bamas, who we've sh who I've shown before, actually has a rhythm that he's had that he uses a lot, which looks something like this inside the face. So this is looking pretty close to done here on this guy, the side plane of the head. I may actually like yoink another image or I might do a freehand version of this. But yeah, just uh, just for fun, maybe I'm going to plot in some of the rhythms of like, some of the quick sketch rhythms of the Riley method on the shoulders. Or not. I think I'm kind of out of practice on those, so I'll hold off on that. So let's see if there's anywhere I can adjust. I think the eye area and the brow area I got a little confused on. So that's kind of looking a little wonky. Overall, this is a pretty good starter study. Did you link the Hollywood head, head picks anywhere? I haven't uploaded them yet. But I will. For now, you can just screenshot my screen if you want to draw over the head. But uh, I will during the next break. I'll put all the Hollywood heads in their own folder. So that's a pretty effective study right here of a Riley Method head. Um, I'm going to actually shade in some of the side plane stuff. Just to show where the form is turning, basically. If 
But you see, when you have the Riley method, you can more e when you have the uh, method like a, when you have a um, system of breaking down the face like the Riley method, it becomes much easier to kind of visualize uh, where shadows go. Or how shadows shadows would work on the face. Uh, there's also another thing that I've seen done, which is I'm gonna maybe try it out here. I'm gonna go back through. Maybe I can try adding some rounded, fleshy masses to these very planar spots in the face. And you see it's already starting to feel a little bit more like a face just from doing that. Because this is muscle and muscle and bone that's, uh, that's doing its thing here. And muscle is very pliable, well depending on the type of muscle. I'm going to maybe do, in the time I have left on this one, I'm going to maybe see if I can do a, either a freehand or a quick sketch one right here. Let's try that out. I should remove this area here so I don't get distracted with visual noise. Yeah, we're gonna, when we get into facial anatomy, we're actually going to be doing stuff that isn't going to look too dissimilar from this, uh, where we do draw over some photographs trying to find the underlying anatomy of a face. There's a lot of really good reference that I'm going to be pulling from that before we get to that stuff in the future. All right, so I'm going to do kind of like a quick sketch version of this where I'm not too concerned about perfection, but I kind of want to reiterate the things that I was, that I was learning when I did that other, when I did this. So, might be good if I just have this next to it, next to my, the new one I do, and I'm just going to try to kind of copy study from what I did a little bit. And it's not going to be perfect because it is a freehand. And also, uh, my hand is not, hand and eye aren't completely warmed up yet. That's a reality you have to deal with. Like your hand and eye are always not going to be in the best shape. They certainly aren't for every single one of the classes I do. I've had uh, some really good days this last week because I've been keeping up regular practice. I actually wanted to do more practice yesterday, but I just decided, mm, no, I really need a break. So I only spent about an hour drawing yesterday doing a little bit of prep work for today, but I really needed a uh, strategic rest day yesterday. But I'm looking forward to doing what I was doing last week, which is most days during the week. Um, even on the days that I'm not teaching classes, busting out three hour work, uh, three hour figure and head drawing workshops where I get really good time pose stuff in with the people from the Discord. This, up there, the anchor point of the eyes. So this method is really tricky. Don't feel bad if you feel like your ass is getting kicked by it. Um, it's gonna be like that for every for like everyone who tries this for the first time. But um, you you may start to see even early on like how some of it starts to click. 
or if you have uh, experience from drawing and observing heads previously that you're able to apply to this, you may say, oh wow, this is actually making it easy mode to find these things I struggle with, and it might click faster for you. See, I struggled so much, so long to construct these really complex things, but then this method of breaking it down like makes it easy. Like a lot of pe a lot of people who have a lot of head drawing under their belt to begin with often take to this method really really quickly. Not too concerned with getting his facial expression, and I'm just trying to memorize the Riley method rhythms right now. I'm not trying to get a pretty drawing. This is the memorization time right now. Because I'll be able to play with these later when we do our quick sketch. I'll be able to play with these more freely. When I'm doing this, I'm making mental notes about how these lines work and how they interconnect because then I'll be able to use them a lot quicker when we do our quick sketch later. You can tell already I'm maybe overemphasizing the jaw on this guy. I might have to shrink that a bit. It's a little better, I think. A little better, but the cranial mass still seems a little small. Maybe I can counterbalance it by beefing it up slightly. It's a little better. So other things uh, that you want to look out for in the Riley method is the the mouth bullseye. Like start coming up with like visual like visual memory tricks to remember things. There's like the there's the brow arch and the uh, the front of the head archway, for example. There's the ear loop, the ear cheek loop, which is a double cheek loop and it goes to a jaw loop. There's uh, the, so the socket orbits that are contained by this line from the brow and this line from the side plane of the head. and so on. When you study a uh, Riley method from like other people who do like their own modified versions of it, uh, try to stick with the people who like have really really well executed mo modified versions of it because those are people who've been able to take the methods and adapt them, uh, the Riley method and adapt it to other things they know. And you might pick up on some of their some of the other things they know. If you're practicing from people who are really good at using this stuff. Like I wouldn't practice from me, for example, because I'm still learning this. But um, I would maybe use some of the methods that I'm trying to learn um, and memorize these with, so like drawing over a photograph. Um, and then like uh, trying to do your own freehand version of it immediately after. So we've got about like two more minutes I think before we take a five minute break.
The orange turtle is absolutely right. Taking breaks will help you absorb information faster. That's absolutely true. It will also, it will also by the way, help you partition when you focus your, your time, attention, and energy. Like you will be less apt to get up and be distracted because like, no, I'm focusing on this now and I can feel confident that during the five minute break, I'll be able to, the five or 10 minute break, I'll be able to let my attention wander a little bit when I'm taking a quick breather, get up and walking around and so on. Yeah, this is a pretty a pretty good start considering I'm coming in here a little bit raw and after a day where I wasn't really drawing very much. This is a good start to get back into things. That's why I like head drawing class on Monday. Because sometimes I take a break on Sunday and I uh, kind of need to recenter myself coming in the next day and really slowing down and, and uh, paying attention to a, a, a human head on some very simplified methods of breaking down the human head. It's a good way to orient myself. I have a background in uh, theme park caricature, so I have so my comfort zone is actually absorb, observing human faces. When I'm ridiculously out of practice with it, so you're going to see me struggle to get back to where I used to be uh, in the coming weeks. Struggle, I'm going to struggle to get back to where I used to be and go beyond it. It's like I'm not quite there yet. But I can show off some of my older um, portrait studies, maybe during this class. Like when I'm in better drawing shape, I can I can get pretty good likeness and stuff. But I'm not really dwelling too much on the past. No, I think we are at a break. I don't believe I set a break timer, but I can tell from eyeballing the clock that we, we should be on our break now. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? It looks like you don't yep, have I any I didn't set a timer, but that's okay, because this was 25 minutes. So, okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, and we're starting now. There we go. Okay, so there's a pretty effective demo, I would say, of showing off how you can study and memorize the rally head doing a draw over of a photograph and doing a study immediately after it. This study is a little bit unsure of itself, of course. So, because I was like kind of feeling out the lines and so I did a lot of petting the line. And so I'm, that's a habit I'm gonna be working on trying to break in the coming weeks. Um, and one way to break, one way to break that habit is to lower opacity on your drawing and then try doing a clean line version of it. And the more of this that you do, uh, the more that you're going to like tell your, you're going to be like telling your mind and your body to go straight to this step, basically. Make smarter decisions so you don't have to sketch the lines as much or pet the lines as much. Kind of feel out where you're, where you're trying to aim for. Also, I noticed there's a few rhythms I did I neglected to include, like. This one right here. I'm on a break, but I'm using the break time to actually do some of this for my own satisfaction. So it's something along these lines. And we're not going for perfection right now, we're just trying to understand the more you understand, the more accurate you'll get. You're, you're going for better accuracy through iteration and practice. You're not going for perfection because you are not going to get perfection 
throw that idea out of your head. There's always going to be mistakes and shortcomings. Com like com a photograph is going to beat you every time for accurately capturing a figure. What you want is better accuracy and the ability to replicate an illusion of an idealized version of the face on page that's like better than just the photograph. And it could be if you're like into fine art tier stuff, if you're aiming for fine art tier stuff, what you want to aim for with that is realism but better. The versus like illustration that tends to be much more kind of caricature ish. Like Norman Rockwell type stuff. If you really look at it, like the way he draws stuff is really heavily, heavily exaggerated, almost like human, human, uh, human faces and bodies turned into cartoon poses. Like taking the photo reference that he that he made and then pushing it a little bit beyond that. And that principle applies to fine art too. They just do it in subtler ways or very somewhat very different ways yeah there we go kind of getting there Realism, but better feels like challenging God. I'm going to add two minutes to the timer because I spent that doing that. And I hope that some of you did try drawing along during the break when I was doing that. Hang on one sec. I got to fix this thing. I'll leave it. I'll leave this paused here. Actually, let's leave it playing because it's like 30 minutes. Um, okay, we will add two minutes to timer. Done. Two minutes added to your five minute timer. Okay. You've got two minutes and two seconds to go. Oh, okay. Okay, Google, add one minute to timer. Done. One minute added to your five-minute timer. You've got two minutes and 51 seconds to go. So we got about three minutes for this rest of this break. I'm going to hydrate a bit. Um, I would suggest getting up and stretching, walking around a little bit, stretch your arms out or whatever, shake them out, walk around. You want your blood flowing because we're doing a very sedentary act here and you're going to get fatigued if you sit down um, the, for the whole session uh, without getting up to walk around and uh, take care of yourself. And fatigue will, will ruin your ability to learn. Alrighty, and then back. So we're going to have a lot more fun later when we get to the quick sketch stuff. Cool thing about doing rhythmic quick sketch, you don't have to use every rhythm in the face, and you don't have to use it perfectly. You can play with it. And it's not too, just too dissimilar from how you would utilize the Riley method if you're doing a comic. A lot of comics, if you look at comic art, are like handled really, really quickly. Like, they look almost kind of sketchy. Like in terms of how execute well how well executed they are, like the cut you can often you can often see that in contrasting like how well drawn the cover, or well, like well rendered the cover art is in a comic versus like the interior art. The interior art for a lot of comics tends to be more simplified, 
uh, more on the abstract side of things uh, exp that tends to be more expressive. There's exceptions, of course. There's a lot of like comic art that is like got lavishly rendered and stuff and lavishly detailed. But like, yeah, I want you to kind of like think of those in those terms of like the kind of what you see in comic in like what I'm talking about. Okay, Google stuff. What I'm kind of talking about for comic books when we get to the quick sketch stuff. So we did a kind of a profile view. It was kind of a three quarter profile view. So we're going to move to doing a straight on view now. Straight on view is going to be pretty challenging because uh, symmetry on the Riley method head is super fucking challenging. Um, if you try doing one of these freehand, which I do recommend doing, uh, it's going to kick your ass <laughs> unless you're using like a measuring tool or something to really kind of measure stuff out, like getting like the symmetry on stuff like, uh, I, can, I actually have like muscle memory kind of uh, study study memories of like messy of like uh, messing up uh, uh, like this area in particular like how the brow curves around there on either side um, and like if you notice by the way like this this actually the actual reference here is a little bit of a, a little slightly asymmetrical if you really look for it like this corner of the cheek is slightly higher than that one <laughs> so Maybe try to find, maybe try to like, um, get it as close in the ballpark as you can when you're doing a straight on study. And I'm thinking for this one, I may actually, let's see if I can get a good zoom ratio. I may actually just like do a straight up freehand study of the face from this point of view, from this point of view. Uh, I'm going to actually, um, put the front view on over here so you can guys can more easily see it but this guy will be on screen with me too I'm going to try for a three-quarter view and to me a, a front a front pose view here in the next 25 minutes um, you may see me mess up uh, no you will definitely see me mess up but I'm gonna give it my best shot so okay Google set timer for 25 minutes 25 minutes and that's starting now so i'm starting straight away with a center line drawn straight down um and then i'm going to kind of plot in about where i think the bottom and the top of the head sphere is a bit and then i'm going to kind of Maybe ghost my line a little bit so I kind of get the width working about where it should be. Well, I'm sure of making a perfect ellipse at this size, so I'm kind of using these little guidelines to plot it out for me a little bit. Oops. Erase that. Of course, we are not going for perfection with this. Just trying to learn a few things from these. Learn what can go wrong with it as much as we are trying to get stuff right with it. Because this thing is uh, going to take a while for all of us, myself included, to fully digest and memorize. I'm further along than when a portion of the people here, some other people here might be further along than me using this thing. I have a very lumpy circle. So I'm going to maybe try to fix it a little bit. It's not something that's kind of working. All right, now that I have that, uh, I think a good place to start would be to kind of figure out where about where the bottom of the chin is. I'm going to guesstimate about like. 
I'm gonna run here-ish, I would say. I'm just gonna adjust it as I go. But I think the next step for me would be maybe to find the side planes and the front plane. So like about here-ish would be the where these lines kind of come from. And those are describing the side planes of the head. It might be a little bit too far in actually, so I'm going to erase those and move them over a little bit. Or I think that one was actually pretty on. This one was a little high though, so I'll move it down here. And then roughly about the halfway point of the sphere of the head would be the tops of the ears. I think the brow line would be about there, or the um, hairline would be about there. So that in mind, we have roughly about where our first third is. So I can use this one third to measure some key landmarks of like where the bottom of the nose is, about here. And where the, let's see here, one, two, nope, something's off, something is off. And I think I know what it is. Yep, should actually be about here. So the third is actually measured if you look up here from Like each of these, each of these points are a third right here. One, two, three, four. So that's where I should be measuring, and that that circle actually, that circle in the center point actually goes a little bit above that. So I can actually add that circle in right now because I have a pretty reasonable approximation of where it is. Also, I'm kind of just going to have to accept that for this, for this my lines are gonna be a little shaky because I'm kind of unsure about plotting my lines right now. So that's, but that's okay. I can just like, after I kind of get it sort of in place, I can erase it. Then try to get a cleaner line in. Some of, some of this is gonna be kind of a line drill to warm up my hand in that regard. Yeah, so the tops of the ears should be roughly about here, let's say. Bottom of the ear here. And the bottom of the chin is actually about here. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I can do the side planes of the jaw. Curve that down here. I think that, let me just check something. I think that the jaw measurement might be a little off. Check my thirds again. Yeah, that's a little closer right there.
Draw a line, line across so I can get rough symmetry with the um, other side of the jaw. Thank you, Dan, uh, uh, Dan Mendoto, for the Twitch Prime sub, by the way. Every little bit helps. So I've got donation links down below for my, uh, my uh, PayPal Ko-fi page for direct donations. Uh, you can subscribe to me or send me bits on Twitch. And uh, I also have a PayPal that you can sign up for to get high-quality images of my class demos. I teach four times a week through Twitch, and uh, you can see past broadcasts of my uh, of my class lessons on figure drawing, storyboarding, um, head drawing, and uh, other subjects uh, archived on my YouTube page, which is also linked down below. And yeah, if you want to help me out, uh, you can really help me out by spreading word about my channel and the Discord community that I'm a part of, which is down below. Uh, it's a community for artists from uh, at, at all kinds of varying skill levels who are serious about getting good. And from in, from beginner to professional, we're a community that helps each that like helps each other stay on task, and. Uh, does regular study and class types and free class stuff like this, where we get art workouts in and we basically go to the art gym together. Studying these really tough subjects that are going to help us get the skills we need to get the jobs we want to get, or the um, placement in a university course that we want to get, or whatever. Whatever your goal is. Or the skills you need to make your own short films or something, like your indie game project. We are kind of like a, a um, secret weapon slash starting point for a lot of people. Like we're a, um, we're like a gym support group for artists, basically. Like keeping, keeping people motivated and on task with what their goals are. And, what they struggle with. So I'm starting to lapse a little bit into autopilot a bit because I, I've done Riley method heads before, so I'm like my muscle memory of doing these is starting to come back a bit. I did kind of like a really slow and careful start because I wanted to Make sure I didn't measure, I didn't mismeasure things that would go t too terribly out of whack. But I'm not too worried about perfectionism with this, because we're going to be doing a lot more of these in the future. Um, future head drawing classes, we will be doing multiple drills of this kind of stuff. Like we will be repeating this subject, uh, but not all at once. Like uh, I believe that. Well, next week we're going to be doing this head stuff again. And we're not going to lap around this time back to Loomis heads, but we will cover them again in the following week. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be finally building on what we have been lapping on around on. And we're going to be re-memorizing things that we've already previously studied and gone over. And we're going to be moving into facial features. In the course of doing those facial features, we will also be using these previous methods of drawing that we have that we have used as well. But don't worry if you're a newcomer. Like the way I teach these classes, anyone of any skill level can participate.
that muzzle in there. I should have put on a front view, shouldn't I? Because we're kind of doing um. See if I can get a dead-on front view. I know there was one in here I saw. I think of David Lynch, actually. Or Johnny Depp's pretty good. I think what I'll do, uh, now that I've done this kind of loose form up here, you can see this, like, this is what you're, this, this kind of, like, scrap, chicken scratchy Riley method head. This, I'm, fam I'm familiar with my Riley method heads looking about this chunk, this chunky and scratchy whenever I'm out of practice with using Riley method stuff because my lines are unsure. Uh, and uh, you will probably notice by the end of this, my lines are going to have more confidence in them. A good way to build line confidence is to do a is to do what I'm about to do, which is I'm going to import the photograph that's on screen in here into my drawing program. Um, first off, I'm going to drop it behind. I'm going to lower opacity on it. I'm going to put it behind what I did just now. Because the head is at a very slightly different angle. And uh, Johnny Depp's facial proportions are a little different than the model. But you can see it's kind of working. Like the general idea of the, head's, the head works about the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and then draw on top of it. And I'm going to get those Riley, uh, Riley method rhythms in. I'm going to try to do it quickly and try to use fewer lines. So I'm going to do it with more confidence than I did on that last, uh, on that last copy study of the rhythms themselves. So let's just get this. Like I know a Loomis. I know what a Loomis head is. I can just do a big circle here. I got kind of this side plane this head on either side. Remember those side planes that I started with? And then I have like a center line right here, dropping down through his face. Um, I can maybe put the sides of the jaws in because I'm pretty confident with those. And uh, then I, got like, I can measure out the tops and bottoms of his ears. Then I can start, um, like, let's see here. I can get like the front plane circle of the face right here, which dips into a little bit, it weighs into the eye sockets, if you notice. Um, and then like, uh, I can actually, that his hair actually use, uh, use, can be used as like kind of a measuring device here, if you notice the way that it's kind of combed. So this rhythm falls along the edge of the eye, like about where the tear duct is, kind of. Uh, and it flows all the way down through the chin, kind of like that. I think his corner of his chin is a little bit over there. Um, same thing on this side. And of course, his head is actually slightly turned that way. So the angle is going to be a little bit different. So then, from here, let's see. Yeah, I can push that in a little bit. Let's erase some of that. All right, so you can get this kind of mass in of the chin right there. I'm going to get a mass in of the muzzle and the two cylinder kind of. Then I'm going to pull down the rhythms from the corners of the cheeks, uh, the corners of the 
ears and over the cheeks to the corner of the mouth like so do the same thing on the other side I'm about ready to plot in roughly where the eye, eyeballs are a little bit So lower opacity a little bit on this. I'll use maybe a different color line for the rest of this. So then probably add in the brow line here coming up from that rhythm over there that was part of the ear to the mouth ear to corner to the mouth rhythm. Coming across the brow about here. Create a little triangle wedge at the center line. Curving it down around on this side plane here. So the bottom of the nose is about here. I think the bottom of the sphere actually goes a little bit under here from what I did. Like that ish. It's more like this. It's the underside of the nose there. A little bit. Then from these rhythms on either side of the face, come up like this, and down to the nose. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? You've got four minutes and 18 seconds to go. Cool. Oh, there's a big rhythm I'm missing right here. It's this one. It comes up in through the nose there. And it inter interse intersects a little bit with this other secondary rhythm. It comes from part of the ear. I'm just throwing some C-curve for the neck there, and a little bit of the shoulder. Let's have a little bit of time, I'll add in just an indication of the, the upper and lower eyelid. You don't have to worry too much about getting that right, but it would be good to kind of like at least 
and include like the eye socket and then like okay the tear duct keep in mind where the tear duct like leaks out over on the tear duct side of the eyeball a little bit so you have kind of like this going on right here with the upper and lower eyelid like on one like on one side there's kind of a, a bent line like that and a bent line like that both opposing each other and then this like the tear duct is over here the eyes in there just about His eyebrows seem to. I think his, his eyebrows are part. His eyebrows are low, partly because of his face type, partly because of his facial expression. He's narrow. It looks like he's kind of narrowing his brow. Another thing I'm going to include that's not in part of the regular Loomis head or the part of the normal Riley head rhythms is this kind of top plane thing right here. You can go back through and like play with the planes and stuff, kind of like this. So I'm not really doing this for accuracy. I'm just just doing this to kind of play with what I drew a bit, kind of understand what I drew a little bit by going over it and playing with it a little adding in stuff to it, shading in this area, for example. Or you can actually use the actual existing shadow patterns on screen to kind of decide where the shadow goes to. Okay, Google, stop. There we go. So the next one we're going to be doing is a real three-quarter one. We technically kind of did a three-quarter one with this, but this guy was supposed to sort of be a profile view. I'm really kind of happy with how this with how this study turned out. For me, coming back rusty, this is a, actually a big step up. It shows the regular practice has been pay paying off for sure. I've still got a long way. I've still got a lot more practice to do, a long ways to go, but it's a good start. So the next one we'll be doing will be the three quarter view. Okay, Google set timer for five minutes. Five minutes starting now. And thank you for an anonymous cheer for the hundred bits. I think an anonymous cheer is just that. Just what happens when somebody wants to cheer anonymously. I don't think. Uh, it says a non 100 or something. But yeah, thank you whoever whoever cheered me for that uh, with the, that one dollar. I think a hundred bits equals one dollar. Yeah, let me get the um the. Th the three quarter head we're probably going to use on screen real quick before I forget. And that one would be good. That one would be good. It's quite a lot of them. Oh, that one could have been, yeah, that could have been a, a, one of the straight on ones. Especially because you can see his cheekbones really easily right there. You can't see the tops of his ears though, but that's not, that's okay. You can find them. This is a pretty good one, although he's got too much of his facial expression. We kind of need a neutral facial expression for these. And this is a pretty good one for three quarter. It's got kind of a down tilt to it, but that's okay. That's another good one. That's actually pretty good. 
but he's he's got an expression we need something neutral leaning towards this one of Michael J. Fox probably there's another one I saw in here this one either that one uh, this one actually might be good because that one's a really clear photograph and you can really make out the planes because of the the lighting in it so we might use this one I think it is a down tilt but that's okay we did actually like a slight up tilt on that last one uh, on that uh, last profile one that's actually kind of a three-quarter one I sort of warped his head on that one as I'm looking at it more with more scrutiny. I think it might be that I just grew his head in size, actually. Let's see what let's see what happens if I um take the photo and put it under. Yeah, I made it larger. So yeah, I actually got it pretty pretty close in the ballpark. It's just larger in size. So look at that. That was that actually turned out pretty good. It's just a little larger. No, no, I'm gonna get up and stretch a little bit. Oh dear, we lost quite a few, quite a few viewers. That's a shame. I was hoping more people would stick around for the whole session. I think we kind of peaked at somewhere around forty something viewers, and now we're down to twenty four. Yeah, try to stick around, folks. This is this is good meaty stuff, and uh, it's good to put in some mileage on it. And I hope that uh, you get a good, you come away from this with a pretty good overview of what to practice on your own. Uh, and I can also recommend an affordable um, study resource for this, the New Masters Academy, which is a site you can subscribe to uh, for art tutorial videos, uh, has a really good um, O'Reilly Method head uh, section in it uh, that you can. Um, I have not actually dug into, but I may in the future when I re if when I resubscribe to them. Um, but they teach a they teach a okay Google stop. But I've had a look at that. They're, I've skimmed through their course and they they, they teach Riley method pretty well from what I saw. So you definitely would want to check them out. Yeah, uh, let me actually give you the Hollywood heads that I meant to during the last break, real quick. So I'll make a new album. Hollywood head refs. Select images. All right, so I'm going to create a copy paste link. Got about 58 images that it's uploading right now, so it's going to be a little bit. Uh, just make sure re you refresh uh, refresh the browser window with this link. Um, I'll link that in, in uh, Twitch chat, and I'll link that in Discord chat. I see that Jet drew a uh, posted one of his images that he's doing this uh, that he's doing the, using the Riley method in, in chat. Uh, Jet, the, you're making one of the common mistakes of the Riley method um, of newcomers, where the uh, uh, the bottom half of the draw is looking out of whack, out of uh, proportion to the top. Um, the eye line that you drew across the face is actually the ha supposed to be the halfway point 
of the rough halfway point of the head. So um, what you can do is you don't have to erase the bottom half. What you can do is you can kind of beef up the top, beef up the top of the head a bit, just like add more, add, like add, like make the sphere of the top of the head, um, make the sphere of the top of the head extend out a little bit more. That usually can solve it. I'm gonna maybe do a quick correctional demo on this real quick. Show what I mean. So this is Jet's drawing right here. Crystal, good job. You, I can see you can you're slowing down to try to memorize the rhythms, but unfortunately, the what's going what's getting away from you here is the proportions. Uh, so we're gonna work on that real quick. Just give me a sec. So I'm gonna do a quick. I'm gonna take a detour real quick to do a quick demo from this. And. Uh, Show what go, uh, show like what went wrong here. What went wrong here is like so like the eye line here is basically like the rough halfway point of the face. So this should be roughly equidistant to this. Now, if you're doing a character that has like a, a overemphasized jaw, like a Ron Perlman type, that might change drastically. But um, for our generic um, Riley Method head, this is not this is generally not normal, and also doesn't look like a, an existing human type. It looks like a. It looks like an exact. It looks more like it's an unintentional caricature. So what what you can do is um, you don't necessarily have to erase any of the other stuff you did, but you do have to kind of course correct a little bit with measuring out like roughly where the top of the head is below, well, like uh, from here to here, and reiterate the same measurement up top. It's about here, actually. Once you've done that, there's a few things you actually do have to change. Uh, one of them is, oops, one of them is, of course, where the side planes of the head start, right here. Also, if you notice, it's looking a little narrow now that we beefed up the top of the head. So I'm going to maybe adjust that a little bit. But I mean, it's not looking too terrible. So maybe I should adjust the width a little bit of the cranial mass to kind of compensate a bit. And maybe you just have to accept that this guy might be looking a little narrow. But at the very least, we can fix the cranial mass a bit. So let's see here. The reason why you want to use measurements like that is because they, because uh, your eye can fool you into thinking something looks right. Like you do want to use your own eye and your own eye and your own judgment, make your own calls and stuff. But sometimes you need to kind of orient, reorient yourself a bit. So the top of that front head sphere would be about here-ish, something like that. And then we can include a rhythm that you didn't include, which is. This one down here, down to down through the chin and the side of the nose. Let's see, from these measurements, it's looking better already. I'm going to lower the opacity down so I can do a cleaner version of it. I'm. Something about how I'm sitting here is making me kind of do chicken scratchy lines this evening, and I'm going to have to maybe solve that. There was an angle that I found at my desk last week that worked really well for line control, but for some reason I'm, I'm not really feeling that I'm sitting in the right spot right now for that. 
it's kind of leading me towards tending to tending to make chicken scratchy lines. So I'm gonna have to maybe maybe, maybe like double down on like being really deliberate with my line choices. I'll erase that. Don't really think you need to draw it all the way down there, just to about Hmm, what's going on there? So this rhythm should actually be doing this. But I mean you got you got the right idea. Just mind the proportions. And look, look for the rhythms that are not quite where they should be. But again, you don't have to be too concerned with, perfe with per perfection on this. Keep doing these and keep trying to memorize from it and keep playing with it. Like this is a tool that you're going to be using for like a lot for like the next year or so to really learn. So just start making this and I'm going to be too. I'm going to be as part of my, my regular head drawing class, this guy is going to should be showing up a lot going forward. Yeah. Well, it's somewhere in the ballpark. You can make your own adjustments as you feel see fit, but I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, here, I'll do a maybe a copy-paste screenshot real quick. Uh, and then we're going to move into doing the, um, the three-quarter. Uh, I think that because I think that like how long it takes me to do these we should be I should be able to do it before the next break um, but here I'll screenshot your I'll screenshot your thing and upload it uh, after um, after I get the three-quarter demo in so we got this head angle um, I'm gonna copy paste it in chat or copy paste it in my um or import it into my drawing uh, area real quick. So this is a slight down tilt three quarter view. I think we have another photo of the same guy that's not quite a down tilt, but I really like this photo, so I'm, I want to. I really want to do this one. Whoops. So I'll lower opacity on that. What we're probably gonna do for the remainder of the session is we're probably gonna do fives, sevens, or tens after this. Uh, and in like Riley Method quick sketch, basically. All right, so with this guy, I'm actually going to try to get more bold with how I do these instead of all chicken scratchy. So I'm gonna make a decision and then if it's wrong, I can erase it. So my decision first off is I'm going to make a careful circle about where I think the head is. That's a very lumpy circle. So I'm going to erase the part that's lumpy. I'm going to erase this part that was looking lumpy. Try to get something that's kind of playing with what the photo is a little bit. There we go, that's close enough for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the side plane rhythm, like that. Just about, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I think I can use, I think I can kind of play off that a little bit to find the top of the head, like so. So you notice I didn't explicitly draw out a full Loomis head this time because I have it internalized. I did start with the head sphere though. 
And you do usually start Riley Method heads with a head sphere. So let's see here. Get the angle of the jaw. The bottom of the chin there. So this guy's head is aiming down a little bit, so the, ear, the angle of the ear versus the angle of the brow is going to be about like this, kind of. I'm going to ghost. I'm going to go stand like a rough little measurement right there. That helps me think of this thing in 3D a little bit better. So we got a center line about here. Going down through the front of the face, down to the chin. There's our center line rhythm of the Riley method. Let's see here. So I got this little triangle wedge somewhere about here. Where the, here, let me, let me just, another thing you can do is you can check like the different um, angles of the Riley method to see how the lines work from different angles. If there's something you kind of wrap, you want to wrap your head around three dimensionally. So you can use more than just the reference from the particular angle of the Riley method head that you're looking at. I'm doing a little line padding. You want to avoid that or minimize it. So let's get this rhythm down here. Let's be bold with this now. There we go. That looks pretty nice. I'm gonna maybe try for the next one. This one goes down to the chin, kinda. Of. Oops, I did a little scribbling there. There. And then likewise, on this cheek right here, looking at our reference of the uh, of the Riley method rhythms, you can kind of pull down and find that rhythm, even though you don't see the other, you don't see where it starts at the other ear. So I'm going to erase some of this so I don't get confused, because that was just a reference to kind of visualize things three dimensionally. That is not a Riley method rhythm. Do a little bit of kind of contour drawing just on the edge there, just to get the edge of the face in. And I'm going to add this rhythm that plays up in through. You can actually see like right here this this area right here of shadow and light, in the um, in the eye there. You can use that as your rhythm point for the tooth the uh, the muzzle of the face right here. Remember, people, uh, human beings are animals. We have a muzzle just like a wolf or a cat would, basically. It's just squished in compared to other animals. We're kind of like pugs. Interesting fact about human beings. Um, we have to keep our brains cool because our brains are like are like superpower processors that tend to tend to overheat an awful lot. That's why you tend to think better when you are in, are in a cooler climate. Or uh, when you're able to keep cool, or where, or when you are able to keep your brain cool. Like you can be in a hot climate, but um, if your like internal temperature of your brain, because of like the amount of oxygen you're keeping circulating through your system and stuff from inhaling and exhaling, if that's able to cool your brain, you can uh, you can your cognitive abilities will be just fine. Even, even in sweltering temperatures. 
but that that's why you can't con that's also why you have a hard time concentrating in in uh in heavy heat that's also what part of why sports teams who are used to heavy heat tend to do much better in cold climates in uh, cooler climates anyway because their bodies are used to um, and have adapted to uh, much tougher temperatures so they can stay con they can stay focused physically and mentally focused when they're playing and make smart plays even even in sweltering heat. Kind of like that uh, for me when I was, uh, I, w I actually experienced that myself when I was um, doing caricature, theme park caricature at Disneyland uh, when I was in college. Like it was sweltering heat a lot of times when, we, when I was out doing caricature. Some days were actually so bad that they would actually cancel um, because they knew because they knew it would be they would either cancel or limit how long you could work that day because they, they it was it becomes a health health liability for employees otherwise there we go this is actually starting to get a little bit closer to how I kind of want to do these studies freehand too I did leave out a big rhythm here though it's this this one right here And it's not perfect. Uh, what's going to happen with these is you get more used to doing them, you'll be able to use them more effectively. Like really dry, slow versions of trying to memorize it and stuff are inherently going to look a little kind of not very inspiring, not very interesting. The technically pretty okay, kind of, but the where you want to go with this stuff is that is some of the other better drawings that I was showing. I'll show some of those again during the break. But this, this is that stuff I posted in the folder earlier, of like um, stuff that looks like it's drawn by people that um, are able to embellish the face and uh, have con have, ex have a lot of a confidence using the Riley method. Like this guy, like this guy, like this basic model right here by itself doesn't look very fun, does it? That's why it's important to look at how like advanced people apply Riley method. Because you want to see how the tool is employed uh, beyond like you look like look at that that stuff that you saw up there that I just showed you. Those are more like almost kind of like technical drawings, aren't they? Like technical schematics of the face. They're not very fun to look at. They're not very cool to look at. They're like a owner's manual for the human face, almost. So you really do want to take a look at what like really advanced people do utilizing this technique. And uh, of course, the way you get to memorize it is doing what I'm doing, where you do a mix of drawing over the face, drawing alongside it. Let's see if I can maybe do just bust out a quick sketch for fun of that thing on the side, just just for the heck of it. I'm not even going to use all the all the rhythms. I'm just going to throw something down for fun. Really simplified. Really just playing with it a bit. Because you shouldn't be scared of these things, like, oh, if I mess it up, it's going to all fall apart. I mean, it kind of, kind of, but I mean, like, you're supposed to digest this stuff in chunks, and you're supposed to not necessarily use it all at once to accomplish every task you're, 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 uh, you're going to do. Like, you aren't going to be, like, doing full, fully detailed Riley method heads for, like, every frame of animation on an animated character, for example. Or you aren't going to be using that all the time for, your, like, your comic book characters and stuff. It depends though. I mean, some some I've seen some 
comic artists that do go all out on that and like the re the level of realism and detail but most of the time you're just going to be just taking some abbreviated version of some of these systems so that you can get like the broad strokes or just get like the, the little bits of information you want to convey to get to communicate what you're trying to communicate with whatever character you're drawing Loosening up like this will also help you develop a more intuitive sense of how to use this thing. Like I said, it's a you should not be scared of this method. Like it does take time to learn and become intuitive. But the part of the way you get there is by doing a mix of slow careful drawings where you're really trying to memorize and observe and a quick shorthand stuff where you maybe use like one or two things effectively and the rest is kind of just rough and loose What do you guys think about the Robert Pattinson Batman? I'm really excited. I was looking for like a Riddler villain uh, arc in the Batman movies. I feel like it's always been a missed opportunity for um, uh, for like Christopher Nolan to do a take on the Riddler. Sadly, we never got that when he was doing Batman. Like he could have made Riddler into a transformative, mind-bending character. Pulling like super, pulling like Inception tier shit, but beyond that, you know. Also, a fun fact I actually didn't know about this till recently, but uh, Satoshi Kon, one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, the Japanese anime director of like Paprika and uh, Tokyo Godfathers, and so on. Um, he was a big influence on, uh, well, he's a big influence on Darren Aronofsky. I know that. I already knew that. But um, he's a big influence on Christopher Nolan, too. There's like a lot of images that are in Inception and several other Nolan films that are homages to, um, to scenes in Satoshi Kon films. Like Inception, the scene where the girl breaks, breaks apart the mirror in the, in, when the, in the architecture scene. Um, that was a that was a transition moment that was taken from Paprika. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? It looks like you don't have any time. Okay, to Google, set, set timer for five minutes. We're on break. Sure, five minutes. Starting now. I forget who the director is, but I mean it. Uh, I mean it looks good. I didn't see anything that really offended me in the trailer, and I think I like the tone that they're going for. The tone seems to be kind of in the vein of like of a throwback to brooding nineteen nineties um, action action comic book cinema with like a mix of like some art film kind of art film elements here and there from what I saw. Like it kind of reminded me a little bit of The Crow. Like it didn't have like the dark brooding neo-noir gothic sets are, are designed and even like even like um uh Pattinson when he when he pulls off the Batman mask and he's got like the tousled hair and the uh uh, and the eyes with the like the black uh, black makeup around his eyes and stuff like he looks he looks kind of like the crow I 
And I, I mean, it's very evident that they are kind of going for a throwback to 90s um, brooding action heroes a little bit. Because the trailer featured a cover of uh, a Nirvana song. Yeah, see, this is what you can start doing when you start like internalizing the Riley method heads. You can start inventing heads. Just, I, I'm just from doing this today. Like I'm starting to like remember the rhythms and they're coming together. Like little bits and pieces here and there. Yeah, Paprika is a really good movie. I think the um, I think there's a few things that it kind of misses the boat on a little bit, but it's overall a really good movie. I kind of feel like Paprika was supposed to be a stepping stone to where Satoshi Kon would go next. Um, in some ways, um, there's well the problem is like Satoshi Kon died a lot. I mean, he left a lot of master masterpieces to us after he passed away, Cin cinematic and his TV series, and it, even his manga is really great too. But um, we were robbed, basically. Like, he had more masterpieces under his uh, uh, to uh, to give us in the future. Like, there's a bunch of other films he had ideas and plans for that we will never get to see because we were robbed by uh we were robbed by uh, by the cancer that took him but he left his mark and his impact on cinema he was he was basically like the um the closest thing to alfred hitchcock uh, other than like christopher nolan when he was when he was still around, and I think that what might have happened if Satoshi Kon had kept going on, he might have had some he might have had a major break breakout mainstream um, mainstream mega hit uh, that would have like made him a, like a a household name in the U.S. I mean he's he is a household name among like film aficionados and stuff for sure, but. Um, and anime fans too, but uh, yeah, we were robbed. Sadly, it fucking sucks when like illness and like bad luck like steals from us someone who probably could have changed the world even more if uh, if they hadn't been taken so soon. The best thing we can do is, is like take inspiration from him and uh, try to shoot for our own dreams and uh, and support people who do take, who are trying to build on what he did, you know? Okay, Google, stop. All right, so we've done like all three of the heads. So now we're gonna move on to head pose quick sketch. I'm thinking we should do um, fives to start. So I'm gonna set it on fives. So we'll do five head poses. Uh, when they come on screen, uh, have your Riley Method head um, handy to refer to. Uh, your Riley Method head's handy to refer to. I'm gonna leave on screen the, uh, the three quarter view Riley Method head. So I think that'll give people enough to kind of work with a little bit. But yeah, uh, we'll go right now. Okay, Google, set timer 25 minutes. Okay, Google, set timer 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. So we'll do um, three sets of these. It'll be five minute quick sketches uh, where you just do your best. 
It's not a race. Just do your best. Uh, use one or two of the rhythms in there. Play with the head. Add a, try like a, combining the Loomis head with it. Play with kind of the head angle a bit. Like this is a slight. This is an up shot, up tilt on the chin right here. Michael J. Fox's head is kind of tilted on an axis a little bit. Um, just like glance over to the image of the Riley Method head. Be thinking about the rhythms that you've just been practicing. Look for opportunities to put them in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to be learning, you're training, teaching yourself how to utilize this stuff and like read these heads in a, in a, uh, in this fashion. I want you to like, if you're practicing this regularly, I want you to, when you look at, at people's faces, be like automatically visualizing Riley method rhythms on their faces. I'm gonna maybe put on some music back here. Let's see here. some music I'm going to put it on the background I found out that a lot of video game soundtracks do not get blunked out on YouTube so I can play them back back here so with five minutes there's more than enough time for you to kind of play with the Riley method rhythms on these heads It doesn't have to be perfect, you can just play with the shorthand of it. Let me know if the music is a little too loud, by the way. I lowered it a little. Just now. So key things to focus, to like focus on for Riley Method, the kind of triple thing, one, two, three, on the front of the face, the, that circle, the brow line, like that, and the orbit of the eye, and then that kind of curl pattern that, that goes from the top of the ear to the corners of the mouth. And of course the muzzle, it's kind of like a bullseye target in the face. Yeah, this is the final boss music for um, Shin, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. It's called Apocalypse, but, the, but you actually cancel the Apocalypse, basically, um, because the true final boss in the game is God. This is the... Uh, you basically fight like the awful Old Testament version of God, who's like, who's, like greedy and conniving and stuff.
No, it's just because I like the song. I may actually put on some more Shin Megami Tensei music. It's good music. Uh, for anyone who's interested in the Shin Megami Tensei series, 5 is supposed to be coming out next year. Uh, and uh, I would pay close attention to it because the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, of which Persona is kind of a, the Persona series is kind of a part, is a classic series that hasn't gotten the attention and recognition it deserves. It deserves in the U.S. And that's partly due to the controversial subject matter that the game covers. The game has you like basically like befriending and summoning lots of like demons and gods from different religions and stuff. Just kind of like a Pokemon combat system. But you fight alongside them too. Like you're you're one of the and you actually learn techniques from the other from like the demons and the angels and uh, and uh, other beings that you uh, you recruit. The series is really very can be like very evocative at times and deal with like really heavy philosophical subject matter too. One of the meta characters in the series, also one of my favorites, is a character named Stephen, and he's loosely based on Stephen Hawking. And he's one of—he's a—he's an optional side boss battle in a couple of the games, and he's one of the hardest uh, battles in the game. In the games, like he's a—he's a character that kind of aids the player and stuff. He's a, he appears as a man in a red suit in a wheelchair, and he looks kind of vaguely like Stephen Stephen Hawking. He's not really Stephen Hawking, he's like the idealized version of what Stephen Hawking represents, basically. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Is that Stephen is uh, one of the hardest boss battles in the series. He's an optional boss because he's not he's not a bad guy. And when he, and when you fight him, it's it's he's just testing your abilities. You get like a huge, you get like some super special bonus shit for um for for beating him. So this is not perfectly to what's up there, but I'm kind of just riffing on it to c construct a. Uh, a quick sketch of Riley Method Head in five minutes. There are some proportional issues, like the bottom, the bottom of the jaw is bigger than the top of the head. Than the top top of the head. Those are proportional things that I kind of struggle with. It's very very common, by the way, that proportional issue I pointed out in that draw over demo I did. Uh, it's very very common, especially when doing these early on to um, accidentally make the jaw really big and heavy, bigger than, bigger than, uh, bottom heavy than the, um, than the top part of the head. I think we, I think, I think five minutes is a little bit too much. Uh, I'm thinking we, we, we should actually slow these down to, uh, we should actually like uh, speed these up to about threes. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Alright, I'm gonna put on a um, stuff from Nocturne now. Should we have a Tensei Nocturne? Here we go. So this is one of my other, my, one of my other favorite uh, battle me battle themes in the game uh, from Shin Megami Tensei 3, which a remake, uh, no, a re remaster of it is coming out on Nintendo Switch pretty soon. Alright, so three minute quick sketch. Go for it. What's cool about 3 is like 3 is kind of a reversal of the usual like, oh you're going to, um, you're the hero who's going to save the world and avert the apocalypse uh, in 3, 
in three, the game uh, the game begins literally like at the apocalypse. Like the world has ended, and you couldn't do anything about it. You, you're just a, you're just like a normal human. So uh, the the game is a bit revolves mainly around like um, you uh, in order to survive in the new world, you get transformed into based into a demon human hybrid. So now you're like one of the demons who's been forsaken by God, basically. And they, so the creatures you, unlike other Shin Megami Tensei games, the creatures you recruit, they are basically your kin. And so the game is not about like averting the apocalypse, but like just like decide, uh, deciding what form the new, the rebirth and remade world takes, basically. And Steven's in that game too, by the way. And so is Dante of, Devil, of the Devil May Cry series. That's where that uh, Don, featuring Dante for the Devil May Cry series meme came from. He, do, he is a little bit out of place with the, with the his, his unserious tone is like slightly out of place, but not completely. With uh, with the Megami Tensei, because the series is generally pretty pretty serious. The ridiculous, over-the-top stuff that Dante does is kind of out of character. But he's optional if you want him, if you want to include him in the game or not, I think. It is actually a setting to turn him off if you don't want him in the, in the story, if I recall. That was a little crappy. There. Yeah, that got really warpy. I wasn't paying as close attention to that as I should have. But I'll probably do better on this one. So these are threes. We're just doing threes for the rest of this little segment here. Before a five minute break. So there's a friend of mine who um, does like art Twitch streams and stuff where if people uh, donate $10 to him for the next 10 minutes or so he'll draw whatever they want him to draw. I might do something like that for, for a four fun stream in the future for fundraising. If anyone is interested in doing that and contributing to a, to a stream like that, I'd like to find out. Like. Uh, to find out an interest check of what people if what people will be interested in for that. I, I draw whatever you want as long as it's not inappropriate or non work safe rather. Just I can draw a lot of very silly, weird, unnerving things. It's nothing that violates the Twitch rules or things that I would be personally uncomfortable with.
Remember, these are quick sketches. They're not meant to be accurate. They're meant to kind of be a quick review and a quick abbreviation of what we're trying to learn today with the Riley Method. Oh, I really filled up this page, didn't I? I think it's time for a new page for me. I think Penn Gillette would not necessarily be out of Penn and Teller would not necessarily be out of place in Shin Megami Tensei though. Because they can get pretty serious and philosophical when they want to be. Despite of like... Building a career off sick and twisted magic. Their cameo in Borderlands 3 was great, though. Anybody who's played that, they were the highlight of the game for me, for sure. A, a boss battle where you kill Penateller. Mmm, that was perfect. And there's a lot of really stupid stuff with, this, with the plot in um, Borderlands 3 that I don't like, but that was one of the, that was a standout for me. Three entire segment of the game with them. So for this you can kind of play with practicing like how the just in quick sketch form you can kind of play with practicing how the Riley method distorts when there's different facial expressions like pens, corners of his mouth and the muzzle that makes up the face gets ex extended out and stretched out here because of he's because he's smiling. So I think the muzzle just kind of warps outwards. here is not accuracy, we're just playing with the rhythms and stuff, like, that was a really bad facial expression for me, but the goal here is to kind of play with this stuff and expose yourself to it. So generally the reason why like you often will see like drawings become top heavy or bottom heavy um, especially in the case of bottom heavy it's because of uh, there's a lot more detail on the bottom half of the face so we have a tendency to kind of kind of over elaborate and over emphasize uh, the jaw area in the lower half of the face. The reverse can also be true sometimes. Like sometimes artists will make the mistake of making the drawing too top heavy. 
usually when that happens, it's a signifier that the artist kind of lacks confidence in attacking those in attacking the detailed areas of the jaw down below. I messed up. Speaking of the devil. I made, the I made the lower area a little bit too bottom heavy. Let's see, maybe I can guesstimate like a general measurement to kind of guide me a little bit on this before the time runs out. I might stick with this one a little bit longer after, this, after it switches to the next one. So I'm going to try a couple things with it. You want to kind of memorize this um, approach so that when you are doing figure poses you can bust these out very quickly in conjunction with the rest of the pose that you're doing. The head becomes a measuring device for the rest of the figure. And do try to accept you're not going to memorize this right at once. Like it's going to take a lot, a lot of returning to it over and over again and reusing it throughout like every day if possible a little bit. Which is what I'm aiming to going forward in the future. Like I'm not saying you have to do an in-depth Riley drill every day, but like you should use the stuff use stuff from it in the head drawings that you do every day. Or anytime you draw a head or whatever, your warm ups or. Or when you're doing a timed figure quick sketch, you might do something like this, where it's like, okay, well, I got my rough approximation of my running method rhythms of. Something like this. Something along those lines for a quick sketch. What are you doing? When are you doing a figure? Let's see if I can do a quick sketch of, the, of Christopher Lloyd here. It's really fast. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, we're gonna be on five minute break after this image changes. So, I think in terms of big broad strokes. Get that triple line going down here. Make it nice and rough and loose. Right here. Get the loop of the muzzle around here. Side plane of the head. Alright, we're going to take a little break. Okay, Google set time for five minutes. So once you start to understand the Riley method though, it becomes a lot easier to kind of bend it pliably to fit different facial types. Like I'm just doing a super quick, quick sketch kind of playing with what we're memorizing today. But you could do a more slowed down 
accurate study of Christopher Lloyd's head here. And you would be bending the lines of the Riley method to fit us to like get the fit, get the facial expression you want to get. I'm doing that a little bit in like a low grade version of it here. It's starting to look a little bit more like his type. For being a rough loose sketch. You can lower the opacity on it and darken in some of the areas here. So when we get more into facial expressions, the Riley method will come, be coming up again because distortion, distorting the face with Riley method simplification is one of the ways we'll be using to study and break down the anatomy of facial expressions. So a quick sketch. I don't think I set a timer. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? It looks like you don't have any so. timer set at the moment. Okay, Google, set timer two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Kind of hard to see his mouth. I think I want to... Going to do some surgery on his mouth. I'm not really spending as much time as I would to normally scrutinize this stuff because facial expressions is not our focus right now. Our, our focus is the basics of the rounding method. But nevertheless, for my own satisfaction, I kind of want to spend a little time with my powers of observation to kind of get a little bit more plausible facial expression. Uh, facial expressions will be a focus of a future class. I don't think it's quite his type or likeness just yet, but, but that's okay, because this is just a quick sketch. Okay, 
Okay, here we go, stop. Okay, Google, set timer for 26 minutes. So do another set of three minutes. minutes. And we're starting now. I'm going to be continuing on this guy. So the lips need to come up a little bit, and the nose maybe needs to drop a little. You can play with picking areas to kind of fill in a bit. Like he's got a pretty pronounced chin, so I'm gonna just like start with that, and then I can of course find the rest of my rhythms pretty comfortably. Yeah, this is your time to play with memorizing the rally head in little chunks, just playing with it. You'll, you'll do slow down versions of it to internalize it more later. But for right now, you're doing three minute poses of the head, kind of playing in fast motion with what you were doing earlier. So we get, we're going to get more into facial typing and stuff in the future as well. But one of the hints I'll give people is for facial type is hair shape and head shape is the key to, to finding a type or achieving a likeness. Likeness is challenging. Likeness is something that's gonna have uh, that you're gonna have to practice. 
to learn how to achieve. And you can, in order to get likeness with this method, you have to learn how to freely play with it and distort it and bend it. And that only comes from getting lots of mileage and like memorizing memorization of the me of the method. And one of the tools to get you there is doing quick sketch. That's what we're doing now. Quick poses where you don't have time to dwell on absolute accuracy. Where you just get down the information in broad strokes quickly. And you take one or two things away from the drawing. Like, I only got a minute left. There's only so much I can do, so I have to strategize about what I'm going to do. When you do these, it's imperative that you have a reference sheet of the Rhino Method head open next to you so you can remember what, st uh, what stuff goes where. Sometimes it's okay to freehand it, try to do it out of your head too, but... You want to do that after you've done a bunch of that, ideally. Because you are supposed to be able to play with these, play with these techniques freely. And that includes for inventing heads. Riley Method is actually a powerful tool for once you have it memorized, inventing heads. I'm just let my arm here. Cool though is the more of these you get under your belt, the more accurate you start getting, the closer to the likeness you can start getting. But that's not gonna happen all at once. Certainly not for me, because I'm out of shape on doing on doing this stuff. About the angle that I'm sitting at here isn't giving me the control I need. I think I'm having to lean my arm forward in a way that's uncomfortable. That's why. So maybe if I sit about here, closer in, or I can rest my arm against the drawing pad a little bit better. That might give me more control.
Alright, now that I have a little bit more line control, so I'm sitting in closer. I'm gonna try taking on this head with more controlled line. If something's wrong, I'll erase it. And try it again. I have to be conscious of these bad habits I'm trying to break. And the way I was sitting just a few moments ago was kind of leading me into the bad habit I have of petting the lines too much and using shorter strokes. That is a habit I'm trying to work on breaking. So even if this is gonna off, even if, even if this is off, I'm not gonna hide it with sketchy lines that aren't gonna teach me anything. I'm gonna practice clean lines. So even if I do it wrong, at least I will practice cleaner, smoother lines. Part of the good thing about the Riley method is if you do slow down to do cleaner lines, they do work like the bendy wire sculptures I'm talking about. So if you get something wrong, you can just bend it to where it needs to be to fix it. Just erase it and bend it back to where you need it. This guy needs more of a forehead here. Bend out the mass of the head a little bit. So Barton Fink, which is this character, by the way, is a, um, it's a Coen Brothers movie, and if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend seeing it. It's a psychological thriller movie that's in the vein of like Alfred Hitchcock, but like even more kind of surrealist, abstract kind of. It kind of pulls you into a nightmare because it. Like, it, it makes sense at first, but then it like starts getting more and more night like a nightmare. And the film is, uh, the film is about a lot of like, it's about a lot of things, but it's mainly about like the anxieties of screenwriting in Hollywood. Whoops. The Coen brothers actually made it when they were going, when they were like right in the middle of going through stresses of working on another film. Or they, they made the script, they came up with the script and the idea for it. Like a lot of the struggles that they, they were having kind of got channeled into this movie. So he does have his jaw open in this, by the way. Something to be aware of.
Yeah, Barton Fink is a fantastic film. I strongly recommend seeing it. It's a very influential movie, too, for a lot of reasons. There's a video game um, developer I saw some stuff from recently who cited it as influence. Oh yeah, uh, what's it? Um, the game Control. Uh, they, they cited part, stuff from Barton Fink as, in, as an influence on some of their, their design and atmosphere decisions. Among other things. They, they had a lot of inspiration. Barton Fink. Barton Fink. David Lynch. Also, if I really wanted to, I could show off the Riley method, how the Riley method works on horse heads, but I'm not really warmed up for animal drawing at the moment on that mask, so. David Lynch among his Hollywood friends. So it's time to practice a straight on view of the Riley Method face for sure. Kind of overinvested my time on cutting the line when I shouldn't have there. So I was kind of power through quick sketching and Riley Method study of the face. Just kind of turned into a quickie Riley drill. that doesn't really look like Lynch. It's because I'm just using this as an opportunity to, whoops, to practice the Riley method. Rhythms from the front a little bit. Try to be a bit quicker with this one. So I'm gonna give, maybe give us one more set of fives after this one. Although we might not go for a full 25 minutes, we'll probably do like a set of three fives or something. So 
So yeah, start using this freely throughout the week. Uh, I'm gonna maybe set things up tomorrow to be to involve some more heads quick sketch. Somewhere around the same time that I ran my class, I'll probably be running a head and figure quick sketch session through the Discord. Or you can get some more practice mileage in and work on this stuff. I might even throw up a Riley Method head on the side, kind of like what I do here, to remind people. We may actually mix in some 25 minute head poses tomorrow too, where we try to get a lane of the likeness or something. This stuff that you do in my class, it should not end at this class. You should be practicing this stuff continuously throughout the week. And anything else that you're trying to study to improve at. You've been kind of slacking off, coming to a class like this that will help you get back on the right track. That's what that's why I hold these classes. They are they are for me and for you. Like, so I needed a break yesterday. In the past, I might be super lazy and I, I might be like, oh, I don't want to do anything today either. But because I have these classes that I teach. Jeez, Ben's, Ben's mouth is looking really goony. I might go back and fix that later. It shows you how, how to practice I am by doing facial expressions. But, um... But yeah, but, um, self-discipline is one of the reasons why I've been teaching lately, because... Coming here with a purpose and a curriculum to try to show people gives me a pretext in which I study and I, uh, a pathway to advancement. In the coming weeks I'm going to be bring, I'm going to be reintroducing animation along a similar kind of curriculum of progression where it's not as loosey-goosey as it was the last few times I, I taught it. Where we have a point to what we're doing at each stage and there's going to be more feedback, and, like there, there needs to be feedback and critique in the animation classes. Like I, I might do a thing where we focus on a subject for a week and then the following week is the critique. Uh, the tr critique and the critique and then people go back to the drawing board and imp um, improve on what they made and then the next week Or I might, uh, I'm kind of like playing with how I structure it. Like I might have a critique period, and then a introdu introduction of the concept period, broken up into almost separate class sections, or something. The name of the game with practicing this stuff is fluency. Like, you want to be able to play with it freely. And that's just gonna take time. You're gonna break it off in little chunks, you're gonna play with it like we're doing right now. You're gonna slow down and pay attention. It's whatever it takes. Should maybe even try to printing out, printing out the Riley method, carrying it with you. It's so like when you go like the, when you go to like the doctor's office or something, you can uh, get a few heads head practice in head practice memorizations in using the the handouts that I give that I've given people here of like the Riley method Riley method heads. If you got an iPad. Can bring those up there, and dual screen, and then practice and copy them. It's 
So his hat, head's kind of covered up by his hat, but he can still work with us. Just have to do a little bit of visualization of what's under there. Like it looks like he's got an up tilt a little bit to his head. And I think like the bottom of his ear would be the angle of his head would be something like this, I think. I'm actually drawing quite a bit bigger than I probably should for these. So the hat line's about there. I'm just going to approximate and guesstimate for this. Still using the Riley Method rhythms and so on, but approximating. Okay, Google, stop. So after this one changes, we will take a break and then we will probably finish up with some fives. Time is the class tomorrow. There's no class tomorrow, but uh, but if I do do a um, a uh, head figure quick sketch uh, session, it will be announced through my Discord in the announce class announcement section, and it'll be the same start time as this as tonight's class is. You unless unless I announce otherwise, like if I do one earlier in the day. If you can't get to it though, then maybe um, you get like if several hours of practice in yourself if you can. I mean, you should be doing the, you should be ba doing basically what we do in this class on your own throughout the week. from the Southeast Asia gang, huh? Hello. What part of Southeast Asia?
So a few things I'm noticing that I make that I'm making regular mistakes on is I often like place the when in my quick sketches I often place the lip line a little bit lower than it should be. It's not too terribly hard to fix that though. And again, it's that recurring problem of making the, the face a little bottom heavy. Okay, I think we're going to be taking a little break. And we'll do. We're going to finish up with three fives. Okay, we will set timer for five minutes. Sure, five minutes, starting now. So let's see here. Let's get set up for our fives. Pause it there. Rather than have any advantage over the Lumus Head, the Lumus Head is a starting point for a lot of other head drawings. You use the Lumus Head as a starting point, in fact, for the Riley Method Head. The Lumus Method is a tool, like any of the other tools. You use it in different ways. In this case, you can use the Lumus Head as your foundation for your Riley Method rhythms. I like this. Yeah, this is a demonstration of how you can use the Lumis head as your starting point. And that's a totally invented head. I of course am looking at the reference I have on the left of me of the Riley method. But that is an invented head. The other thing to do is to just keep doing more of these, really, and you get better and better at them as you're doing more of them. Because then you get to slow, you get more like you get start to make more visual sense of pieces. The pieces start connecting and flowing together better. You start your eye and your hand start developing more. 
Like I've got a lot of proportional issues with how I'm doing them right now. Those are going to be ironed out over the course of just practicing lots of these. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? You've got 25 seconds to go. Okay. So we'll do three more fives to end this tonight. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set timer 15 minutes. We'll go now. Okay, Google, set timer 15 minutes. 15 minutes, and that's starting now. So, the name of the game on these for the five minute poses is slowing down a little more. Still quick sketching but not being so quick to charge in. And being a little smarter with my lines. So thinking through my hand a lot more is something I want to work on. And I need to slow down and pay attention to my line a lot more in order to get there. So it's going to be a big self-discipline this thing this week where I'm going to be trying to do a little bit closer to what I'm doing now, but building confidence in that. Where I don't like just do like this chicken scratchy stuff a lot, but I, do, I pull longer lines. I'm kind of lacking in confidence in them now. But that's gonna change as I draw as I like draw more carefully. Like my dexterity is gonna go up, basically. Five minutes is actually a good time to do this kind of study, I think.
It kind of wandered from Johnny Depp's likeness because I was concentrating more on getting the riding rhythms and stuff. His likeness and his pose here, but that's okay. So I'm just using the observation of his face as something to kind of riff off of for memorization of the Riley, Riley forms. In a quick sketch. In the future, I want to be a little bit more accurate. And I'll get there by doing a lot of these. And paying more attention, paying more attention, iterating on it, building up my hand and eye dexterity. And get some of the hair shape in there just for fun. This, this one's a little bit too hard to see. You can pick a good one for a five. That's a pretty good one. Charge in, don't charge in. Gotta slow down and think. So, and uh, the game control, um, there's the, the scene that I saw them referencing Barton Fink. I'm sure they reference more than just that. The ashtray maze in, uh, in, um, in the game control. Which I'm not going to spoil it for people, but it's, the ashtray maze is one of the best parts of uh, the game control. And in the movie Barton Fink, uh, the, much of the movie takes place in a hotel where Barton Fink is, sta is staying. Like this really long, desolate hallway. 
and you only ever meet like two of the residents of the hotel, like Barton and a, and a neighbor. So it feels like this very desolate place. The imagery from that and the, uh, the, the shots of the hotel became a source of inspiration for the ashtray maze in, um, in uh, Control. Yeah, this is starting to look pretty good. So I'm still still out of whack and proportion, but like I'm starting to get, I'm starting to feel it click. That's because I slowed down, and stopped panicking. Still some mistakes I'm making. Like this muzzle should be like this. This muzzle should be more like this. Yeah, face wrinkles actually follow the Riley method. That's true. That's not a good pose, I don't think. A little bit too ambiguous. Let's pick a really good pose, it'd be good for a five minute. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, we'll do that one. I think this will be our last pose of the evening. Just end on Michael J. Fox here. You can see I'm getting my line confidence back a little bit. I have better control of my line than I did at the start of this. I forgot how I was sitting. How I, how I was sitting when I had more control during the last week, and I had to remember that. And then I had to consciously remember to slow down. This is just, I've just, just been playing the Shin Megami Tensei music and uh, Persona game series music. Like this is Persona 3's battle theme right here.
My attention is wandering a little bit because my stamina this in concentration is going down a bit since the last round of the session. So I'm going to try to focus in this last minute or so to maybe punch up this drawing a little bit. some of the gesture of the facial expression in I think. Okay, Google stops. about done. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw a little bit more on this real quick. And then we'll wrap up. How many of you have been through the whole session and drawing the whole time? So if you want to do some more stuff after this, like take this quick sketch as you drew tonight, um, if you get done here, kind of do what I'm doing a bit, where like you draw over them a bit, to either make them look more like the likeness of the face you drew, you can rewatch the, the, the Twitch replay to find the face. Uh, I was going to share the images of the Hollywood celebrities, but I don't think I have the link for it. Or do I? I think I do. Don't. don't worry, I'll share my celebrity head drawings and maybe like tomorrow or in the future. But um, if you want to work on the faces we drew some more tonight or tomorrow, you can just rewatch the Twitch replay. I'm just making a personal goal for myself and it's gonna get something that's reasonably a little bit closer to Michael J. Fox's likeness here. Just as a personal self challenge for the session. That's a very tail end. Like I'm not too concerned about achieving likeness right now because we're just getting into Riley Method stuff. Like this stuff is gonna take a lot more practice to sink in, even for me. But I'm trying to stir up the muscle memory I have of drawing heads in the past right now. Dust the rust off. So I can be off on the right foot when, I, when I'm doing more head drawing tomorrow. Or this evening. So I'm going to import his image in here shortly to kind of overlay it and check it a bit and see why it's not quite working in some ways and see what I could cut right and cut what I got wrong. I think when I built off the face on the left side I built off a little too much. There's like little adjustments I gotta make. 
for this thing to make it get in the, like, get in the ballpark of likeness. There's some also proportional issues with the bottom of the nose, I think, going on here. So I'm going to try one more. I'm kind of zoomed out a little bit more and I can really observe what's going wrong a little bit more. Correct this as much as I can. So this is just a quick sketch. After all, we got a taste last weekend on Friday of where this class is headed in the future. We're going to be doing a lot more like long, long pose portraits where we have a lot, where we spend a lot more time getting an accurate, li accurate likeness. So you'll be able to really scrutinize and fix stuff like this. Spend, invest the time you need to really fix stuff like this. That'll be in conjunction with quick sketch and stuff where you, where it's all about recording the visual impression, the visual impression of the facial type. Of course, me, like a lot of the people here, I need to build up my hand and eye dexterity by doing a lot of these before I can really execute on that stuff. And we're doing it step by step. It's not a race. This stuff is going to sink in over time, the more of what we do. A lot of this is a refresher of stuff I've done previously that I'm unearthing the muscle memory of. So, I've got four. I've, so, I'm. I'm not going to struggle with this anymore. I'm going to import this face here and see what I got right and wrong. So, lower opacity. So, uh, straight away I can see that um, some of the things I got wrong were, let's see, Oops. I'm going to use a line that I can really see here. So some of the stuff I got wrong was, I was pretty close in the ballpark to the eye, but the eye is actually more about here. Left eye is somewhat in the ballpark, so is the brow, so is the side of the cheek, but then I got kind of lost in here. The overall shape of the head is getting there, but it just needs to be better constructed. The measurement of the nose needed to be adjusted, it's actually a little bit up more up here. And the lips, conversely, like the corners of the mouth are like right here. So those rather method rhythms go up there. This goes down to here. So I did a demo today, a drawing over somebody else's work, and critique, a demo critique of somebody else's work today. And I want to try to do at least one of those in the future um, during these. Uh, future classes, I actually want to hopefully try to structure so that I have a period where people can 
submit stuff for uh, feedback, and I'll do like a an hour, hour or so, hour, half hour to an hour of drawers demos or something. So doing them helps me too, because I internalize stuff that would solve problems in my own work or make me notice when I make it make those same errors that I'm trying to fix a little bit more. Here, I'll move this, I'll scoot this stuff over to the side because this is going to be a bigger collective image when I upload this to Patreon later. Some adjustment, like they, they angled the chin and stuff. I think it needs some adjustment too. But um, for me coming back rusty, but it's a lot more. It's a lot closer to his facial shape than it would be in the past if I was really out of shape. There you go, these. I don't like. That. I haven't really done facial expression in a while, so that goony look on, on Pendulette's mouth there. It's really odd. Uh, there's some weird stuff going on with the lower half of Barton Fink's face here, but it was, this was a good study, otherwise. This is a good invented head, showing that I'm really internalizing these, ri these rhythms, and, and uh, I'm starting to wrap my head around using them. But I gotta do way more, like lots and lots more. Up tilt head that kind of threw me off. Quick rough loose sketch. Here's the quick sketch demo. That was really, yeah, I'm gonna definitely do more of these, these photo studies, where I slow down and pay attention like that. That was a really good study right there. Warm-ups, I believe. Yeah. Cool. Alright, so... Yeah, we're not aiming for perfection. We're aiming to get a little bit better every time and a little more accurate every time. If you aim for perfection, you're going to, like... You're gonna... It, that's self-defeating. You kind of have to accept that you're going to make errors and stuff. The goal is to try to fix as many and, and triage the situation as best you can. Also, I kind of like how reactive this background is back here. It's really pretty. So, congratulations everyone who stuck around to the end here. Uh, we'll be meeting again on Wednesday for a gesture drawing class, same time, 5.30 p.m. Congratulations, Evan Gillian. There we go. So, congratulations. Uh, tomorrow, we'll, we'll, tomorrow we'll at certain sometime, probably 5.30 p.m. again tomorrow. In the Discord, not on Twitch, we'll be meeting uh, for a, uh, another figure and head quick sketch method where, we'll, where you'll have an opportunity to practice more of this. And uh, so, yeah, thank you all for coming. Uh, look forward in the coming weeks. I've got a few things planned. I'm going to re be reintroducing um, animation class again, and I'm going to be um, uh, I'm going to be also introducing some other things I have planned, as well as I have like donation drive stuff that I'm going to be doing to try to see if, if there's enough of an interest in doing some of the donation drive stuff where people will be willing to donate during those. Then I'm going to run um, some chill and draw sessions where uh, I do like drawing marathons and I like, I draw, I, I will draw people's faces who donate or things like that. Or I will draw anything that they want me to draw, like a character or whatever for, for, for donation bucks. 
uh, and I'll do it live on stream and stuff. Um, so that will be coming in the coming in the coming future weeks. But that really chiefly depends on if I get enough of in interest checked in that. The other is that I'm going to be doing also some chill streams in the future, probably while I'm animating, so people can kind of chill and um, chill out and watch me animate and work through stuff uh, on my personal work my personal work projects. So yeah. Uh, with that, we're going to say congratulations and end the stream. Congratulations! 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 Thank you all.